is that the brief studies that follow show that the range of philosophical temperaments goes far beyond the two contrasting types of timid and proud individuals. It is as expansive as the soul illuminated by the Logos, of which Heraclitus said, you would not find the boundaries of soul, even by traveling along every path, so deep a measure does it have. What philosophy is about the soul? We don't use the word as often these days. We used to say you're soulless. Somebody is a bad person, you say soulless. Today, the why people don't say that? Because everybody's soulless. So if you're already soulless, what's the point? Call somebody soulless. The person going to smile. <laughs> Take it as an accomplishment. Great. You call me soulless. That's what I exactly want to be. Why a person becomes soulless? Because you ignore, undermine, and reject the boundaries of soul. So of course, soul is boundaryless. There is no boundary for soul. And we always say, uh, that guy is a great soul, or he has a great soul. We use the same word for different meanings. Soul is something very precious. But in our time, we don't talk about that anymore. Unless we're going to concern about uh, where are the boundaries of soul, or if soul has any boundary. Here he's trying to use this line to say, even you sense some boundaries of soul, if you do. You travel every possible path to there, you're still going to find out it's impossible. That's part of the thing about it being a human. If a human has no soul, what's the point? You can't think you're better than animals because animals, obviously, as humans, we consider they don't really have soul. It might be arrogant to say that, but that's a kind of idea today. You don't think that animals have a soul. Really, when you say animals don't have a soul, you're not saying animals are soulless. You're saying that the humans have more soul than animals. By distinguish yourself from animal, your main yardstick is you have soul. To a point, you're going to decide to say, okay, my animal has soul too. And then you bound it with your cat and the dog, and you say, yeah, oh yeah, my, my pets have soul, just like I do. And that's another way out of the situation, because then you equate yourself with your animals. You think your animal is so special. How can you think of that? And your cat is just a cat. And the only reason your cat is different is because your cat is being fed by you. The cat knows you're going to treat the cat better because the familiar alert. Dogs are the same. This feeding is a form of a controlling. You equate yourself with the pets, and then you think uh, you and your pets both have a soul. Then you solve the problem. But in reality, what you're really doing, you just turn yourself into an animal, <laughs> conclude the story. It's over. That's it. And you're happy, your dog is happy, and everybody's happy. Part of the thing about uh, why we don't talk about the soul anymore. Well, we used to think the soul is closely tied with religion. Since we don't go to church, we don't even believe religion, any religion anymore. Then why you care about the soul? Actually, in a great Western tradition, soul is one side thing, but largely there is the cultural civilization of soul. That's why the people talk more than anything else. That's why we have arts, we have literature, we have all those that we call the humanity. Discipline is a science that explores how much soul human potentially has or how much soul we all hope that it will have. At the end, philosophy's essential job is to define, to seek the soul. Do not think of philosophy just a very difficult text, talking about the nonsense. Your soul is very complicated. If your soul is so profound, let's say, that it needs a language that is equally profound to explore, philosophy is designed for that, besides religion. Because when you talk about religion, you don't have to talk about your soul. God is already taking care of that. So what do you need to do? But any time you begin to have a curiosity about your soul, now what do you do? How are you going to explore that? It's not arts. It's not a poetry. Arts and the poetry dealing with uh, emotions. Philosophy is the only thing that deals with uh, defining, exploring your soul. This book takes us to that view.